nothing gave me as much joy with the exception of once a Nick, always a Nick, Bobby Portis being an NBA champion, but nothing (laughs) gave me as much joy as seeing Marcus Johnson going down the street in Milwaukee with his shirt off, doing the J.R. Smith (laughs) incredible moment. And he's kind enough to join the show right now. We don't know if the shirt is still off, but we appreciate you making some time. That was incredible, man. What was going through your mind when you're going down the streets in Milwaukee with no shirt on? Well, you know, it was just kind of a spur of the moment, just going with the flow kind of a thing. But what really happened was that uh, Brandon Jennings, the author of an originator of Bucks and Six, he was uh, like a car ahead of me. And so he was he was slamming beers. He must have slammed about 20 beers. I swear to God, man. It was just, and he was taking his shirt off and throwing it into the crowd. They'd bring him another shirt. He put it on. He slammed a few more beers. So he kind of got me in the spirit, you know, it, it, with, it, with the exception of the slamming beers part. I, I don't drink anymore. I, I could probably out him you know, back in the day. But anyway, so so I started taking my shirt off, and, you know, it just got good to me. And, and I would slam some, like, Dasani bottled water, but all I can handle at my age. And uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, 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 you know, it was, it was just a fun time. And uh, we had a ball. I mean, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of people they estimated was out there but the, but it was just nuts and it was it was so much fun and, and my family my wife in particular had a, had probably more fun than the, than the guys and the people who were on the sidelines uh, cheering us on and ladies and kids and all that so we had a ball man we had, we had a ball it was great pj tucker talked about uh the team was full of dogs they just didn't know that they were dogs are you a dog do you know that you're a dog do you need pj tucker to help you become a dog Bow, wow, wow, yippee, yo, yippee, yay. Um, no, I, you know, I don't need PJ's help. It, it, you know, I'm a dog in my own arena now, just the broadcasting, acting, writing kind of arena. Uh, and just the tenacity to go out there and get it and be tough and get knocked down and knocked back and, and to get up and keep coming, you know. And, and that's what PJ means. And so PJ, for me, was one of the key acquisitions. And I told John Horstead yesterday on stage – uh, as we went uh, to uh, uh, the Deer District uh, right after the parade and uh, the, the, the throng of fans. But I told John Horse, look, man, you know, that was a key. Bringing in P.J., of course, Drew Holiday, great acquisition. But, but, but in terms of this team's edge, P.J. gave this. P.J. walked on stage with two magnum bottles of champagne. And he's, you know, he's, he's with it. He's spitting. He's, he's, he's. He, he was more, I'm going to post something on Twitter after we get off the air, man, old school 888. He was more animated talking to Jeff P than, than he was playing. I mean, he was just out of his mind. But but what a great, great guy. I talked to his mom uh, at the uh, championship celebration in the locker room. And I just got a lot of respect for him because, you know, he understands his role better than anybody maybe in NBA history. And he didn't get out of his role. He does what he does. And he relishes doing what he does to perfection. Marcus Johnson joins the show. He might still have his shirt off after the Milwaukee Bucks parade. Ben Lyons filling in for Rich on the Rich Eisen show. Uh, Such a crazy scene out there. It's an incredible story. Uh, The Milwaukee Bucks winning an NBA championship. You uh, have a special place, of course, in your heart for Milwaukee, having been an all-star there for many years. So what's it been like for you to connect with the older fans, the ones who have been through the, the rebuilds and, and the terrible seasons and the losing and the getting close and the conference finals and all the, the moments throughout the history of Milwaukee Bucks basketball. What's it been like for you to connect with some of those diehard older fans who are getting to experience this? Well, and I just give you kind of a, a, an example of what, what epitomizes that. So my broadcast partner, Jim Paschke, 35 years as a Milwaukee Buck announcer, I got there uh, after the championship years, obviously. And then I'll tell you, went through some lean years in Milwaukee. Um, he contracted COVID-19 a couple of weeks ago, still dealing with the symptoms. So he couldn't participate in any of this. I mean, how, how, how cruel is fate mm. for, for, for having that happen to him? But Giannis wears a T-shirt with a heart on one side and Jim Paschke's image on the other. Every fan, this is to answer your question, but all the fans... Uh, who were from my era, the older fans were like, do it for Jim, do it for Jim. But but it's, but it's such a strong connection because, as you mentioned, this franchise has seen some, some good teams. I mean, Michael Red, uh, Ben Baker got to the conference semifinals. Michael Red, those guys, I think they got to the they've got to the finals or were a bucket short against the Sixers one year, whatever it was. 
So it's been a lot of close calls along with my my era with the with the Larry Bird and the Dr. J Sixers and Celtics we could never get get past. And so it was just a it was a vicarious kind of a thrill to be able to experience this with this with these guys. And when I was on stage with the guys, this is kind of how it really felt. I mean, I just took I took a seat in the back. Darvin Ham and and Chris Middleton, some of the other two people were like, "Come on up, you know, come on up on in the front with us." And and I just no, no, I just want to sit back, let you guys enjoy the moment, but just allow me to be a part of it. And that's kind of how you know that that's the epitome of kind of how the older fans feel. This is your time, young fellows. But man, we sure are enjoying the moment, and thank you for that. Marcus Johnson joins the show, Milwaukee Bucks analyst. I like to introduce him as the father of Josiah Johnson, the king of <laughs> NBA Twitter. You can follow Josiah, of course, at King Josiah 54 What was it like to experience the NBA Finals with your son? I know you guys had a chance to go out to a couple games together. Had a great time. Josiah came out uh, with good buddy and creative partner, uh, Michael Starberry. Uh, the, the, they, they, they joined us in Milwaukee. My oldest son, Chris, was there. That was for game uh, three. Then Chris stayed over for game four. And then I went out to Vegas to see my daughter win the AAE National Championship for 11 and under. Then we came back, my daughter and my my, my youngest son, and uh, my, my second youngest son, Mariah, he was on the Baldwin Hills TV show, whatever, back a few years back. But then we also, we all were there for game six, the clincher uh, in Milwaukee. And so we were back in the locker room in the Champagne celebration. I mean, man, it was, I mean, you know, to experience that with your, with your kids. And again, that's all, I posted all that stuff on Twitter. It, it's just such a, such a, uh, just a, a monumental kind of a moment, and 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 I know in my life it is, and I, I can imagine something that they would just never ever forget being able to to experience all that stuff. Be on, be on, you know, be on the basketball court, down courts. The Bucks made sure that we had access to everything. We so were there courtside with Adam Silver and and and, and, and Malika Andrews talking to Chris and talking to Yana. We were right there. We we're experiencing everything, and it was just uh, one of those moments, man. That I'm so glad my wife flew out for the parade. She was gonna pass on that and she was like I don't know what I was thinking she had so much fun at that parade so just to experience that with the family it's, it's what it's all about man just to be able to share in the moment and share these kinds of lasting memories man that uh, that will be indelibly indelibly imprinted on on the consciousness of my kids minds forever Marcus you've been a Hollywood guy for a long time now you've had a lot of success in film and TV as a writer producer as well what if I pitch you a story about a kid from Greece who used to sell trinkets on the street, who 10 years later came to the United States and became a basketball god? Would you believe it? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, probably not. You know, he had to share a pair of shoes with his older brother because they couldn't afford two pairs, so they got one pair, and, they, and, and two or three of them shared those shoes together. Uh, mom and dad did the, the tremendous job they did. Dad passes away uh, at a young age uh, three or four years ago of a heart attack unexpectedly. And, 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 you know, and all this kind of stuff just happens for this guy. Two brothers, those two brothers that, that shared those pair of shoes on the same team this year, able to share this moment together. I mean, it is such a, a wonderful, wonderful American success story. And then you top it all off with Giannis and Kubo being as, 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 as humble. You know, I mean, you know he's, he's got ego. Don't get me wrong. He's, not, he, he's got ego. You don't have that kind of greatness to not have ego. But, but he is such a, a wonderful person, genuine person to be around. And it's a story that's going to get made. I, you know, I, I try to, I try to talk him into letting uh, a friend of mine, Michael Starbury, Josiah's buddy, uh, a great writer, uh, write write the story. But he had already gotten somebody on board to handle that for him. But you know, they're in the process now, of trying to make make that story. And what a fitting, not the end of it this season, but but it's one of the climaxes of his his life of his career. And uh, so just just beautiful the way this thing has worked out. Fifty years since since he won a championship, he drops fifty exactly in the closeout game. I mean, you know, you, you couldn't have scripted it any better. Marcus, we got the birthday boys in studio here, Chris Brockman and TJ Jefferson, trying to put down what we now affectionately call the Giannis, which is a 50-piece of nuggets and half Sprite, right. half lemonade, and they're not even getting through 10 or 20, <laughs> let alone a 50-piece. <laughs> yeah, and Marcus, it's not going down well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I appreciate, I appreciate I appreciate the thought, but uh, the execution is going to be really, really tough, man. That's a, lot of, <laughs> <laughs> that's, a lot, that's a lot of nuggets, man. That's too many nuggets. Now that the parade's over, there is a flight that is leaving Milwaukee today, a direct flight to Tokyo, and it's got Devin Booker, Drew Holiday, and Chris Middleton on it. A very uncomfortable flight, I would imagine, for Devin, as Drew and Chris probably still smell like champagne. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what well, was it? You know. Go ahead. No, I was just going to ask you, like, you know, what was it about those two Olympians that you just enjoyed watching throughout this entire Bucks run? Well, all three of them, really. 
seriously. Yeah. I mean, I, I enjoyed Devin too. Don't, don't don't get it twisted. I mean, Devin was. I mean, he was just superb uh, for for most of the playoffs. Kind of cooled off a bit in that game six. But uh, Drew and 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 Chris, obviously, it was game five um, in Phoenix. Yeah, that was the game. You know, and that was the game that you know Drew took over in that second quarter. Chris took over in that third. You know, and 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 they've done it all throughout the playoffs. Even though Drew, at one point, had the lowest effective field goal percentage of any player, uh, with, with a certain minimum of field goal attempts, so he was struggling to knock down shots. But I, I told his pops, I was like, "Look, Sean, man, Drew, I'm loving what Drew's bringing to the table. He, you know, he's gonna hit his shot at some point. But even if he doesn't, what he's doing defensively and distributing the basketball and and his physicality on the court, and then Chris Middleton, where, you know, he's another great story. He's a, he's a guy that was. You know, you know, unheralded coming out of college, second round pick, went to the G League, a throw in in the deal from Detroit that uh, that brought him to Milwaukee, and here he is, a two time All Star and NBA champion. So I, I, I'm so uh, just elated for him to have the kind of success he's had. See, this championship is going to going to really help a lot of these guys in terms of feeling so good about themselves and where they belong in a pantheon of, of NBA greatness that it's going to have you know residual positive after effects for years to come, uh, you know, career and post career for these guys. So it's just a monumental accomplishment that, uh, that has so many benefits uh, uh, concurrently and down the road. Milwaukee Bucks analyst and five-time NBA All-Star Marcus Johnson joins the show. Ben Lyons filling in for Rich on the Rich Eisen Show. You never know what rumors to believe in Hollywood, Marcus. You never know what's true. You hear whisperings about projects, but I've been I've been hearing about a project in the works for a long time. It's a it's a spinoff of White Man Can't Jump with Raymond. It's a Raymond sequel. Where's Raymond right now in his career? <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, you know that's what. Uh... It's funny that we were going on the parade route, and it was so many. Raymond, is that you? You know, there was so many of that, that those kinds of comments going on. But you know, but even seriously, I thought it was Blake Griffin. Somebody was trying to get that sequel going, but hadn't gone anywhere. But no, they ought to go ahead and clip that thing and make it about Raymond, man, the life of Raymond, what he's doing now, and and uh, you know, I can I can give some narration and be old school Raymond to get a young Raymond to kind of do some flashbacks and we can get a crack it, man. We can get this crack it. I see I see Raymond maybe dedicated his life to a higher power, to faith. Yeah. He's gone down the the, the straighter he's, path right now, but his demons just, keep you know, calling him back. He, he's sober, he's he's spiritual right now. But he still got that edge, you know what I'm saying? He, 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 no, but you, you don't want to mess with Raymond Steele. You know, he still got that edge. He still carries that blade, though. You know, <laughs> carry, carry, carry that blade, carry that blade in the name of the Lord. But he still, still carries. <laughs> Marcus Johnson joins the show. Ben Lyons filling in for Rich on the Rich Eisen show. Hey, Marcus, I just uh, this is TJ here. I just had a quick question for you. Um, Michael Jordan. Wiley recognizes the greatest basketball player of all time, had your picture hanging up in his dorm room at North Carolina. And I'm sure you've probably talked about it a million times, but never here on the Rich Eisen Show. I just want to know what that felt like, knowing that the guy who millions of basketball fans around the earth adored had you on his wall. Well, look, and I'll tell you a quick story. We shoot the movie Space Jam and and – he invited a bunch of the UCLA kids out. My son Chris was one of them. So I was hanging out with him every day on the, on the Space at the Space Jam uh, bubble or whatever it was, and, along with Barkley and Grant Hill and Jawan Howard and Dennis Rodman, just one of the greatest runs of history. So we're playing a little three-on-three. Three. Dean Kane, Superman, is, is on one team, and me and Michael and everybody's playing. After we get through playing, or, or, or game point, I think I catch it inside, and I do a little dunk. So Michael's like, Hey, old man. Hey, old man. Don't be trying to dunk out here. Don't be trying to dunk out here. You too old. You never did that when you played. You never did that when you played. I looked at Michael. I said, man, whatever I did when I played, you had my poster on your wall in, in college, brother. So I must have been doing something right. <laughs> and he just he just got all just embarrassed and blushing. Oh, you right. You right about that. I loved your game, man. I loved your game in college. So, yeah, that gave me a chance to kind of one-up Michael. And how, how many people can say that, that you can one-up Michael Jordan? You know, and so that, that's, always been, that's always been a highlight of my of my summer somewhat pedestrian life, you know, just being able to one-up Michael Jordan. So, yeah, it's all good. That's what's up. It's been an incredible basketball journey, and it's going to be a fun summer, I would imagine, for everybody that's part of the Bucks family. Marcus, we appreciate you putting on a shirt and joining the show. Oh, anytime, man. It's all good. I'm still, I'm still on still on, I'm on cloud 10. Forget about cloud 9. I'm still up there on cloud 10, man, I, and I don't want to come down, but it's, it's been beautiful. Send Josiah my best. We appreciate you jumping on the show, man. 
Will do, man. Thank you, Ben. Marcus Johnson. Marcus. Five-time NBA All-Star, shirtless at the parade. Hell yeah, <laughs> That's man. amazing. What a, what a great story, too, just dunking on Michael Jordan right? in the Space Jam bubble. Those runs were, were absolutely legendary. Marcus Johnson. Good stuff. You know, he dunks on his birthday every year still. This is uh, at Old School 88 for the folks watching on Peacock. Uh, he, dumps, he dunks on, on his birthday. He's in his 60s now throwing it down. That's this year with the still mask on. Woo, still That's fantastic. In his all-star jersey, by the way. <laughs> nice flex. <laughs> fantastic. Got a wonderful cactus in the backyard there. Southern California so living. Awesome, Marcus dude. Johnson. Wow. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.